For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, says Colossians 2. And in Christ, you have been brought to that fullness. That word lives is in the present tense. In Christ, the fullness of the deity lives in an ongoing sort of way, continually. <coughs> now we have to refresh our union with Christ. It's like uh, carrying water in a bucket with holes, isn't it? We need to keep replenishing. Because we leak, as somebody once famously said. Not with Jesus. Not with Jesus. Always full. We keep coming to that fullness. There's an issue to notice that Paul is being explicit about in the text here. Paul is explicitly, explicitly not using the word that would say the fullness of God-likeness dwells in Jesus. There's a word for that. He's not saying in Jesus lives God-likeness -like, God perfectly expressed. He's saying in Jesus lives God. It's the fullness of the divine, not being like God. And that's an important thing. Now the consequence of that, and here's why the full deity of Jesus is so important. In the full, if the fullness of God is in Jesus, and we are in Jesus, then look at verse 10. In Christ you have been brought to fullness. It's all in Jesus, and we've been brought to Jesus. It doesn't say the fullness of the divine being is ours. It does say that in Christ we've been brought to that fullness of God in Jesus, and there we can feed on his fullness. That's an important point, especially if you're dealing with Mormons, for example. And of course, the whole of the USA could soon be doing that in some style. Fullness, fulfilment is met with as we meet with Jesus. And such fullness and fulfilment as we have is derived from our personal encounter and union with Him. Now there are plenty about at the moment to try and knock that idea out of you. Just on Facebook this week, a, a Facebook friend of one of my minister friends uh, was kicking off. Because he was a legend that he used to be a Christian and frankly since he stopped being a Christian he's never felt so happy. And then he said something about how he became a Christian, became a Christian, and, and blah, 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 and it's very obvious. Well, it goes like this. It looks like a duck. It walks like a duck. It swims like a duck. It quacks like a duck. It's a duck. He's not a duck. And he never was a duck. He's had religion, but he's never had this union with Jesus. And giving up religion is a great idea. It does make you rather miserable. Union with Christ. Well, I was, was going to say it looks like a duck. <laughs> you get what you get, right? There are plenty of people who try and con you on that one. Is what I'm saying. The fullness of the deity dwells in the exalted Christ. And they, by virtue of their union with Christ at Colossae, already possess that fullness. It's in continuing in union with him that we've got it. Now, what's the corollary of that? Do they do corollaries in maths anymore? I don't even know what it means. <laughs> well, you didn't do it in maths. You're know, my age, more or less. <laughs> okay. It's the opposite of something that is also true. If one thing is true, then... There's a sort of a converse that's true as well, yeah? So if it is in union with Christ that they possess this fullness, it's in continuing union with him that we've got it, then it's when we cease to continue in our functional real union with Christ that the fulfilment slips away, and we begin to think that he is not enough. Yeah? It is when we cease to work on that actual union with Christ that our sense of fulfillment slips away and we begin to think that he isn't enough. Which is why Paul addressed that very issue first with the Colossians in the pre previous verses. It's because they've ceased to feed that union with Christ. That they've got in a situation where they're vulnerable to start thinking that he isn't enough. That make sense? You have to tell me if I'm not making sense today because the old brain box is not working so well. And I will need to be told. 
Now, of course, tiredness can have something to do with it. Pressure at work can have something to do with it. Poverty or relationships going a bit difficultly can have something to do with it. And illness and infirmity can definitely, definitely affect that profoundly. All those things can damage all sorts of relationships that otherwise we can comfortably sustain. Do you expect them not to influence your relationship with God? Of course they will. They damage that relationship of union with Jesus and then dissatisfaction and disfulfillment. Is that a word? It's defulfillment? It is now, yes. We're going to grab that one and stick it in our dictionary. <laughs> then those things will result. In Christ, says Paul, you've been brought to fullness. Perfect tense. Something that continues to be because of a completed past action. But your sense of that can be lost. And that's when you become vulnerable. It's done. You've been brought completely past act with abiding, continuing results to union with Christ when you're converted by the grace of God. Yeah? But what happens is you cease to live in that union with Him. Functionally, we let it slip. Actually, day by day, we let it slip. And then we lose the sense of it. The, the, I'm trying to avoid the word feeling. Can you tell I'm trying to avoid the word feeling? <laughs> we don't feel fulfilled. I don't feel fulfilled. Rubbish today, it's got to do with the throat and head and not sleeping very well and stuff like that. So I'm conscious you've got to all the more work on that union with Christ because you don't feel it. Unless that relationship and that union are sustained, there is certainly no abiding sense of it. We don't feel it and we cease to live in the realities of what Christ has objectively done for us completely. We're just not feeling like that. And that's when we become vulnerable. Now, Paul is no doubt here employing a slogan the heretics have been using themselves, the fullness of life or whatever. And he's saying you've already been given this in Christ in a continuing way as the result of a definite concluded act in the past on the part of God. But they've all lost sight and sense of it, become dissatisfied with the simple gospel, gospel of Christ, and they've fallen prey to the heretics who came along when they were feeling vulnerable and offered them extra. Here's extra. I'm thinking of that advert. Is it BT? Maureen, is it? She gives you extra, is that it? Well, she doesn't. Jesus gives you all you need. Halifax. Is it? Okay, it's Halifax, is it? It's some nonsense advert. The next time you see it, remember this. You don't need extra. Jesus has got everything for you. By virtue of your union with him. So look after that. 